Well, greetings, salutations, welcome back to another Power Query tutorial. It's me, James, your BA Sensei, and today we're going to be looking at dynamically extracting columns for a comma delimited column. So let me give you an example. So we have here a couple of portfolios, value um, investors, and their holdings at the end of December last year with all the stock holdings in there. And you can see it's a comma delimited list. What I want to do is I want to create a separate column for each one of these stocks dynamically. Now you might be thinking, oh, in Power Query, I just use split all columns and it does it automatically anyway. You would be mistaken if you would think that. Because actually, even though you think it's, uh, it's dynamic, it's not. It's actually hard coded. So I'm going to show you how to do this dynamically and dynamically give the columns different names. All right. So once it's in, I just quickly want to show you how the conventional method works in Power Query. So you click the column and you go to split the column by delimiter and say by comma. And now you have the split. Oh, it's beautiful. You can see it by default gives it one, two, three, four. It's not really what we want, but it, it does that. I just want to show you what it does if we actually click on the formula there. Um, the hard coded bit is this bit over here. It's a list. So if I actually have 14 stocks, it won't actually add it there because this is hard coded, which is the actual problem. So now I'm going to show you how to combat that. So let's quickly delete all of these steps. All right. Very first thing that we're going to do, we want to look at the amount of commas in this column. So I want to count the amount of com commas because that will give me an indication of how many columns I'll be needing. So I'm just going to say add text column. So now I'm going to use a formula called text dot position of and we're going to be looking at the stock holdings and we're going to look for anything with a comma. I'm just going to say enter. So now it doesn't quite do what we what we want because what it actually says is at character four, that's where the first comma is. It's counting the first comma. I don't want that. This one is minus one because there's no comma. So I'm just going to go back into this thing. Now I'm going to modify it, but I'm just going to say, show me occurrences or all the occurrences where there's a comma. Now it's going to return a list. So now if I look at this, let's look at this one over here. It's going to tell me there's a comma at character 3, 7, 12, and 16. This one, there's a comma at 4, 9, 11. But this gives me, if I do a count of this list, it gives me the amount of commas in the list. This one should have zero. So what I can do is I can use list.count to count the number of com commas. So let's quickly do that. We say list.count. And we're going to count the number of commas. So now we actually have the amount of commas in each. But just one thing, if you look at this column, there's zero. We need to plus a one because the amount of columns, if we look at these two, even though there's one comma, there are two columns. I need to plus a one. I'm just going to add plus one there. So now this is a true reflection of number of columns. That's the number of columns step. Next thing that I want to do is I want to add a new step. I'm going to say add a new step after this. And in this step, I want to return. I want to return that custom columns. And it's going to give me a list as a result. So now there's a list. Here's a list of all those uh, number of columns from the previous step. So a list of all of these from the custom column. Yes. So what I want to do is because I want to add the maximum number of columns. So I need to determine what's the max of this list. So I'm not going to use list dot max. So I can see the most number of columns is going to be 13. Okay, but now I want to create a list from one to 13. So I'm going to say curly bracket one, double point to 13. So now I created a normal list from one to 13. Now what I want to do is if I look at the previous step, I want to actually say this, this column should be stock one, stock two, stock three, stock four. And I'll do is I'll go into this list. And I'm just going to say list dot transform. And I'm going to give that the input of that list. And I'm going to transform each one of the rows in there. So I'm going to start with each. I'm going to start the column editor with stock underscore and Remember from the inquiry language, so you uh, use a little underscore like this. That's an indicator for each row within this table. If I close that up, it's going to give me an error. 
the error is I'm trying to combine a number and a text. So I need to convert this last guy from text from give a little guy like that. So this is now going to be my column name. So I'm just going to give this the dynamic column names. All right. So now we have the dynamic list of column names. Next thing is I'm going to add a new step after whoop. And I don't want to go there. I want to take this step off from source. So now we have the source back here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply the split. So I'm going to say split column by delimiter. I'm going to say split it by the comma delimiter. Yes. All right. But you see now it's giving us stock one, two, three. That's not what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, take that type out of there. You can see it's kind of giving me all of those. So I'm going to take all these hard coded values out. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to replace that with our dynamic column names. I'm just going to put in there dynamic column names. And like magic, you can see now we have a new mystical list with those column names in it. So if I now return this, pretty cool. So now you can see it's actually only 10 stocks in there. Pretty cool. So now if I add another stock, XXX, rerun it. It's actually in there. Very handy little trick. Do not be fooled by Power Query if you just use your default one. You're actually hard coded and you actually, if you refresh and there's any new values, you won't see it appear there. But this was a nice little trick. I hope it really helped you. It really helped me. Yeah. BA Sensei out.